What I'm trying to encourage is like the development of an ecosystem. What I do for my customers is I open the architecture so that you can design your own modules. This is a multi-axis robot that you can do just about anything with. That's the idea. It's an architecture that's meant to be expanded and extended. Many of you know binder jetting, the multi-jet fusion, the uh, metal binder jetting technology from Desktop Metal or X1, but there's not all that much on the open market, the open materials, open systems, open architectures. Frankly, there's not that much outside the large production environment type machines, but that's all changing here today with this company, B Jetting LLC. And of course, Dan Brunnermer. I got it! Did you I get it? it. Ah, Again. Dude, it's great to see you. We'll do great it. to see you. So a quick little intro. So Beach Jetting, you started this a few years ago. That's right. You've been going in, going hard on binder jetting. You almost like kind of invented a lot of this stuff. Well, you know what I tell people is I give full credit to Ellie Sachs who invented it. Mm -hmm. What I was able to do was commercialize it. I was the first guy who really got it out of the lab and into a sellable, commercially viable product. The Got first it. product I designed was called the R2. It's been running in continuous operation for about 18 years. Is that a, is that a Star Wars reference? Don't get technical with me. No, it's because it had a 200 millimeter build box, so they oh, called nice, it the R2. Nice. So it was, it was a small robot. The, the though, right? R stood for rapid, and the two was for 200 millimeters. So here today, you've got the educator. Give me your the brief overview, and then we'll get into a lot of the technical details. Sure. So basically, Rob, you know, it's a binder jetting platform to start with, right? It's got all the powder handling for. You've got to put a level powder pack down, print your image with binder, which binder is just a term for glue. I don't know why they can't just call it glue. <laughs> then you've got to add a little bit of heat to like in between each layer. And so this, that's what this platform does. It does everything that you need for a basic binder jetting system. Plus it has a built-in curing oven and a built-in depowdering system so that everything fits in one small box. A lot of binder jetting is done with uh, materials like aluminum or titanium and these materials that you don't really want to have out in the open, right? right? So what do you do about that? So Rob, you take this machine, you put the whole thing in an inert environment. So what I mean by that is something called a glove box, right? Which is yeah. a box with glove holes with in it. Gloves. <laughs> And, yeah. and you, instead of filling it with air, you fill it with argon, you fill it with nitrogen, mm -hmm. you recirculate that so you're not wasting all that gas. And oh, it's got yeah. a dehumidifier built into it to take any of the vapors out. Yep. It's got filtration in it to take any stray powders out and to keep your environment totally clean and oxygen free. So this is a machine, not just for basic binder jetting of like polymers and plastics and stuff, but for literally full on production testing and R&D for crazy, awesome metal 3D binder jetting. That's right. Like I say, it's a 60 by 60 by 60 millimeter cube. I can go all the way down to about 30 microns in layer thickness for some bigger particles. My very first customer actually is doing a glass-based system, like really big particles, two, 300 microns. I can do half millimeter thick layers. So what, I what I've come up with here is a five slot deck. Right, so you can have up to five slots and they can be arranged in any manner. What I do for a standard binder jetting machine, these three slots are dedicated to spreading, leveling, and heating the powder. These two slots are dedicated to the actual printing and randomizing the printhead location. Okay. And they just kind of work together going back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could think powder materials, liquid materials, right? Okay. And, and that's kind of the basic architecture of how it supports binder jetting. You do need some kind of randomization axis here, and I have a real simple example of one here. But you know, at the end of the day, you've got X, you've got Y, you could put a hot end here, a little rule of spill, filament up there. Maybe you go with a print head, but you don't want to do binder jet. Maybe you want to do something like an object process. You pull this out, put a UV lamp in here, mm. and now you do material jet. You know, essentially, you've got to spread powder, right? So like this is like one type of a powder spreading mechanism. It's good for a certain class and range of powders, right? Okay. But it's not gonna be good for every single powder. I have like, say this staged uh, rotary gate and you can see how like it kind of has gates that open and close. And, and so if your powder doesn't work with this one, you can try this one or you can try other ones. But the great thing about the open architecture 
is you can try your own powder dispenser. Okay, so that roller kind of works, but I think if I added a little bit of vibration or a little bit of air pressure, right. or a little bit of this, maybe I could make an improvement. What I do for my customers is I open the architecture so that you can design your own modules. This wasn't flowing right, let's change the parameters. Maybe we need to add some texture into the roller. Right, exactly, you you're want. following me. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. So imagine instead of having two devices, I want to consolidate two slots, slots into one, build a little core XY right on there. I could use those etching uh, lasers yeah, and do yeah, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, the low-powered right? ones. Right, exactly. Uh, so, so this is a multi-axis robot that you can do just about anything with. That's the idea. It's an architecture that's meant to be expanded and extended. And you can do it yourself because I'm going to provide you with a complete documentation package that right. explains how the system works. What I'm trying to encourage is like the development of an ecosystem. Right. Like, you know, what if, what if somebody really has a great idea? You know, they make the perfect powder dispenser. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sell their powder dispenser. Okay, now it's called the Educator, and you base it off all this open hardware and all this open stuff. So what's what's behind that? That's a great question, Rob. So, you know, the first people that I had in mind, of course, are my customers who have come to me. People who maybe are brand new to binder jetting, or maybe they have an existing system and they want something that they can have on the side so that they can do some research while they don't tie up their production like machine. Like new materials, new right. binders, new stuff. Exactly. Just experimental. Right. And, and you, you want to put the production machine on it. Exactly. Because what if you wipe out your production machine yeah. or you delay Ugh. a production batch yeah. because you were doing some tests, right. right? This lets a power user like that have a tool that they can they can do explorations with but it's also for my university friends you know because a lot of them like you say people want to get educated about what binder jetting is and so what i've done here is right. i've put the whole system in one box this is the printing deck this lets you cure your binders most binders are thermosets so you have to do right. like a, a a high temperature cure all of the depowdering is done over here and i know it doesn't look real but this is actually a complete depowdering system for getting about 80 to 90 percent of your powder evacuated from the box it's also designed as like a low power system so it's 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 10 amps at 120 volts. This machine right here outfitted straight up for standard steel processing, 100K. Yeah. So we're talking metal binder, we're binder talking jet. We're talking metal again. binder jet, 100K, 60 millimeters cube. Preset, ready to go. Preset, ready to go. Believe in binder jetting. I mean, there, it, there's some negatives that people talk about, you know, shrinkage, distortion, sintering is difficult. Those criticisms are true, but those are all things that can be overcome in a production setting. You right. know, like when you're really ready to make a thousand parts, you can tune your machine and your process so that you get yeah. those thousand parts reliably. But it does take a little bit of education, yeah. a little bit of research, yeah. and you will have binder jetting success. If somebody wants to, if somebody wants to get in contact and learn more, oh, where yeah, do they go? Oh yeah, definitely come to b-jetting.com. Okay. Um, that's our website, and you can find out all the information about the machines and platforms there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Absolutely. If you guys want to learn more, uh, reach out to Be Jetting directly. Call us up here at Vision Miner. Dan's a great guy. Loves to talk to people. And I and, love Rob. Ah, you know, <laughs> it's good. Thanks so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next one.